the long awaited power profiling results have finally been completed for the new pack that I purchased the Anchor Power Core 26,800 power delivery. This took quite a bit longer than I anticipated, especially because I had to go and run quite a few trials. And as I did the trials with a lower current draw, the time between each test was increasing dramatically, as you might expect, but it's done. So here we are. I wanted to quickly show the setup. I did not end up using the USB multimeter in between the battery and the load because the USB multimeter appeared to have some sort of bug that caused it to erroneously report the capacity when the power was cut, when the battery reached its end of charge and would give me capacities like 70,000 milliamp hours, which is just not correct. I mean, so I ended up using a simpler setup, which was just the battery, as is shown on the left here, plugged directly into the load, which has its own display and can measure the voltage and current and give you a overall amp hour rating as well as the watt hour ratings. A few things before we move on forward, the battery testing setup for the experiment went as follows. The battery temperature and the environment was roughly kept the same between about 65 degrees Fahrenheit and 70 degrees Fahrenheit. It was always kept indoors between that, that range of temperatures. When I charged the battery up, I would charge it all the way up until the LED circle stopped animating, and then I would unplug it and allow it to sit for about a half an hour, sometimes longer, minimum a half an hour, so that the battery could cool down so we get the real world use, because you wouldn't necessarily be charging the battery up all the way to full capacity and then suddenly be discharging it right away, at least from my experience using a variety of battery packs. I typically charge them up all the way, they sit for a couple days and then I'm using them for various things. When the battery was fully discharged, that was just when the load shut off and I saw the lights turn off on the battery pack, that was the end of charge. The unit was then plugged into another pack that was charged so I could read the values off of it, but I would you know, turn the thumb dials down all the way so that there's no additional current being drawn so we got an accurate reading. And I think that about covers everything as far as charging. It was always charged using the supplied PD30 USB-C power adapter, and there were no overloads attached to it besides this synthetic load. I think that's it. Let's go on to the next piece here with the table with all the data in it. So I'll just go from left to right, and then we'll sum it all up with a beautiful graph. On the left-hand side was the target wattage for each of the runs. There were a total of eight runs. The first run, which was at the 27.1 watts, which I covered in the previous video, and then seven additional runs, yes, seven additional runs, to get a power efficiency profile. I wanted to do a few additional runs down to say one and a half watts, one watt, and down to whatever the threshold was before it cut out. But these run times were getting quite long, as you can see on the far right column, which is just in hours. That is, I got from five watts to about four watts to two and a half watts. It was 16 hour run time, 21 hour run time, and then 31.55. When I got to that 31.55, I was like, that's it. I'm, I'm done doing any more <laughs> power profiling. But jumping back over to the left-hand side, we've got all the wattages that I targeted. Moving over one column to the right was the average voltage DC that I saw when I started the testing. As the synthetic load heated up, the resistance increased, and so the current would drop, and so I'd adjust it to bring the current back up to at least meet the intended approximate wattage I was looking for. The average voltage was measured once that synthetic load it had heated up and there was no more sag occurring in the current. And so that took, for the runs that had higher wattages, that was only after maybe like five or 10 minutes. For the runs that had lower wattages, upwards of about an hour before I saw that voltage stabilize. The average voltage was taken 
after everything stabilized. And then it basically, I was kind of checking in on it an hour or so, and it just stayed because of the way that this, these packs run and Anchor's voltage boosting technology or whatever they call it. It never changed from the voltage really from its uh, an initial stabilized voltage value. Next column is the current. It was done in the same way as the average voltage. Measured in equilibrium after everything had a chance to warm up. Column after that was the quiescent power draw. I mentioned this in the first video, but we didn't take it into account with the 27.1 watt run because it accounted for less than 1% of the total load. But as I went down, even into the 15 watt range, it started to account for a little bit of additional power consumption just to drive the display and some of the circuitry on the synthetic load. I had measured it before, I showed it in that previous video and used that data to generate a good approximation of what the quiescent power draw was. How I got that was the average current that was seen times the average voltage for that particular run, and that gave you the instantaneous wattage, times the total average run time. And so that was how much watt hours were being consumed. So how much power over time was being consumed. So as you can see, as you go from bottom to top in this chart, the watt hours start to actually accumulate to a higher amount, especially when you get down to the final run that I did, which was 2.5 watts and the quiescent power draw was 6.4 watt hours. So it was a notable amount of power being consumed by the display on the load tester and the internal circuitry and all of that stuff over a period of 31 and a half hours. <laughs> That's the uh, column for quiescent power draw. The next one was the raw capacity measured by the synthetic load tester. There are the numbers. You can look at them. The, the more important column is the one next to it, which is the capacity plus the quiescent power draw compensation. So took the raw capacity that came out of the power analyzer and added that to the quiescent power draw to get the total amount of power that was sucked out of that battery pack from the point it was fully charged until it shut itself off. So. All of that good stuff brings us to the next column, which is the efficiency in that particular run. How much power was being delivered to the load from the 96.48 watt hour cell, which is in the lower left corner of this chart, to the actual load? You can see the efficiencies. Actually, they were higher than I expected for a pack like this. It's just, it's, I, I'm quite impressed. Even at the lowest loading at 2.5 watts, 3, 3 watts, 5, 7, even up to 10 watts, you stay right in that 87 to 88% efficiency range. So that's really quite high. As you start loading it down 12 and a half watts, 15 watts, and then obviously the 27 watts, you're really putting that pack into high current draw. And then with the 27.1 watts, it was being boosted to 14.19 volts. The boost conversion is where you actually start seeing it tail off the most. The last two columns are just the accumulated runtime, which helped me determine the quiescent draw watt hour calculation. And all of that information was taken off of the synthetic load. It always accumulated the total runtime, which was reset on each run. I will say that I did repeat a few of these trials, uh, the ones that were shorter, just to verify the outcome, which is about, I think the 15 watt one, the seven watt one, and the 27 watt one, all which the values came out basically the same. So I didn't go back and repeat all of them, but I wanted to make sure that if I picked just a few of them, that they were coming out the same, we didn't get some random result. And so when you look at the graph, which really clearly shows how stable this thing is across much of its power range, and the trend of the graph is basically it's flat through 10.5 watts and then starts to fall off as you start loading it above the about the 10 watt range. But all in all, the pack ran 
effectively between 79.5% efficient to 88.75% efficient throughout the most lightly loaded situ situation, not the extremely lightly loaded situation, but a very lightly loaded situation to the most power it could output and remained quite efficient. If you like what you saw, please give a thumbs up and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.